everyone, and welcome to The Balancing Act. I'm Olga Villaverde. And I'm Montel Williams. What you need to know about treating and repairing hernias. Also behind the mystery of Friedrich's ataxia, a rare genetic disease that causes damage to parts of the brain and spinal cord. We'll have all that information coming up. The Balancing Act starts right now. If you or a loved one has ever experienced a hernia, you know how painful it can be. It's so important for patients to know they have options when it comes to the materials used for repair. We begin with one patient's story. Take a look. My name is Mark Sear. I live in the Boston, Massachusetts area with my lovely wife and my son. I've been working in the medical field for about 30 years. I was coughing and I felt some discomfort in my abdomen and I was concerned something might be wrong. I decided to go see a physician that I was referred to. The surgeon diagnosed me with a hernia. At that time, the only option that was given to me was to have a synthetic mesh implanted to secure the area where the hernia was. Um, I had a little apprehension about it that synthetic mesh is going to be in there for the rest of my life. But at the time, that was my only option. Mark's surgery was a success, but he continued to have a periodic tugging sensation where the synthetic mesh was placed. And I started to feel some pulling and tugging, and it was restricting me, and it was making me uncomfortable when I did certain things. And as a father of a young child, and someone who participates in many different types of sports, um, it was bothersome to me. Went back to my physician, and I told him my symptoms. And he said, it's not uncommon sometimes to have some patients have discomfort with the synthetic mesh. It's unfortunate, but that was the option that we had at the time. We visited with Dr. Paul Zotek of the Indiana Hernia Center to learn more. A hernia is a hole or a protrusion in the anterior abdominal wall that is a result of a weakness that has occurred over time and allows an internal organ to protrude Abdominal hernias occur in the groins as well as around the umbilicus. Hernias occurring in these two locations can be a result of aging as well as repetitive stress in the groin area or around the umbilical area or previous incisions. The signs and symptoms of a hernia are bulging through a certain location where you think the hernia is located, redness at that site. Hernias can be noted to increase pain with lifting, coughing, and these are often the times when, when we first notice them. Hernia surgery can be divided into two basic uh, different modalities, open incisions versus minimally invasive surgery. Hernia repair involves stitching the hole closed and then reinforcing it with some form of a reinforcement, whether it be a permanent synthetic mesh or a non-permanent mesh uh, or a reinforced biologic material. In the United States, over one million hernia procedures are performed every year. The economic burden of hernia repair accounts for approximately $48 billion of healthcare expenses annually. The data shows that reinforcing this hernia repair with some form of uh, reinforcement material will ultimately result in the less chance of you getting a recurrence for the hernia. Other factors that can re uh, result in recurrence of hernia are increased weight gain, return to activity uh, too soon, and overall uh, poor health as you age. If a patient suspects they have a hernia, it's important for him or her to get it evaluated by a doctor and to know they have options when it comes to the materials used for repair. Current surgical mesh options available fall into several categories. Permanent synthetic mesh, resorbable synthetic mesh, tissue-based mesh, also known as biologics, and a newer category known as reinforced tissue matrix. Permanent synthetic meshes are made of plastic synthetic materials that will remain in the body for the lifetime of the patient. Due to their synthetic nature, they can generate a foreign body response. For some patients, this may lead to chronic inflammation, potentially causing pain, injury, and subsequent surgeries. Resorbable synthetic meshes are similar to permanent meshes in that they are manufactured from synthetic fibers which may cause a foreign body response. However, these synthetic meshes will resorb completely over time. Biologic meshes are predominantly sourced from animal tissue which may be better accepted by the body than synthetic materials and generate less of a foreign body response. However, over time the animal tissue may weaken and stretch, potentially reducing the strength of the surgical repair. These products can be quite expensive which may limit their use to select procedures. Similar to biologic mesh, the reinforced tissue matrix category utilizes animal-derived tissue. However, in this case, 
case, the tissue is reinforced with small amounts of either permanent suture for long-term reinforcement or resorbable suture for temporary reinforcement. In both versions, the intent is to provide additional strength as the body heals after surgery. Because there is very little suture material, the reinforced tissue matrix has been optimized to reduce the potential for a foreign body response. In my practice, due to growing concerns over the permanent synthetic meshes as a result of increased patient education, we have gone to a model of shared decision making. In this model, we look to taking into account the values of the patient when deciding reinforcement materials for their hernia repair. During our office visit, we go through each of the different categories as well as discuss the recurrence rates, the complication rates, and the patient's preferences. Ultimately, the patient is empowered to decide which material they would like for reinforcement of their hernia. Seven years after his first hernia repair, Mark was diagnosed again, this time with one on his right side. I was concerned about putting the similar product in that was on the left. I quite frankly didn't want to do it. Uh, so I started to do some research because I did want to look for some options because, you know, I'm considering maybe even not having it done. And during that time, ironically, there was commercials on the television about the synthetic mesh in patients that have caused a lot of problems. And coincidentally, one of the friends uh, I had discussion with um, educated me on a product that is more natural tissue based. And I approached my surgeon with it. He did know about it. And we both decided that it was the best way to go moving forward. Ovitex Reinforced Tissue Matrix is a more natural hernia repair option. Ovitex represents a significant innovation in mesh design and was developed in partnership with surgeons in application of novel engineering principles. It is made of biologic tissue and surgical suture that is interwoven in a lock stitch pattern to provide its strength. Ovitex has been purposefully designed to provide a strong tissue-based repair which supports natural abdominal wall function while minimizing the risk of a foreign body response. With consistent clinical results, Ovitex helps address the clinical and financial concerns of traditional hernia repair implants. The following adverse events have been reported for surgical repair of hernias with or without a surgical mesh. Pain, infection, hernia recurrence, adhesion, bowel obstruction, bleeding, fistula, seroma, perforation, mesh migration, and mesh contraction. Talk to your doctor about whether Ovitex is right for you. Because Ovitex is a newer product, it was not originally available at the hospital where Mark was to have his second surgery. Some hospitals can delay introduction of new technologies due to their policies, and that can limit the innovative products they are able to offer to their patients. Mark's surgery was delayed, but eventually Ovitex became available for his procedure. After recovery, um, I, I recognized that there were some differences between the right side and the left side. Um, I did not have any of the pulling, any of the constriction that I had on the right side where the new product was put. Um, I'm very active. I bike, I ski, I play basketball, I swim, and obviously I play with my child quite often. And in doing all those activities, I have felt no discomfort at all um, on the right side of my body. So the addition of the reinforced biologic material Ovatex has really provided a, a new option for our patients within our practice that has increased patient satisfaction. We've been able to minimize their foreign body, minimize their chance of chronic groin pain, and minimize their complications while still providing with that minimally invasive repair that will allow them to recover faster, return to work faster, uh, and really overall improve their quality of life. In addition, we have not noticed any changes in the recurrence rates or any other issues associated with using this product in minimally invasive repairs. I really wish Ovatex was an option back when I had that procedure done. And for anybody that's considering a hernia repair, it's worth talking to your doctor about Ovatex. Talk to your doctor about whether Ovatex is right for you. To learn more, visit telebio.com or just go to our website, thebalancingact.com. On Behind the Mystery, Friedrich's ataxia, a progressive and debilitating neurological disorder. Patients can often experience at a young age difficulty walking, clumsiness, and impaired speech. We're going to sit down with neurologist Dr. Susan Perlman to learn more, but first, let's meet patient Frankie Parazola. 
I began to notice symptoms when I was in my freshman year of college. I was struggling going up the stairs. I could just feel how much harder it was to put an effort into walking that was previously so easy. That's when it first started to hit me like something was going on. It was getting more and more difficult to bring the groceries up or even just going down in my car. Walking across the stage at our graduation, I was terrified. I was more worried about falling at my graduation than I was about actually graduating. The Balancing Act met with neurologist Dr. Susan Perlman of UCLA Medical Center who treats patients with Friedrich's ataxia. Friedrich's ataxia is a neurodegenerative genetic disorder with mutations in both copies of the FXN gene that makes frataxin protein. Frataxin protein is necessary for the production of energy in highly energy dependent parts of the body, which includes the brain, the nervous system, the heart. So brain cells, especially those that control coordination and balance are weakened and the heart muscle, which requires a constant supply of energy, is also weakened. Upon graduating college, Frankie began to investigate her symptoms further. It was her godmother and godmother's husband, both in the medical field, that spurred her diagnostic journey. It was definitely noticeable that my gait was off. They gave me the reflex test and I had zero reflexes. And the way they looked at each other when that happened, I just got the feeling something was wrong. That's how I got introduced to a cardiologist and neurologist. The early symptoms are so generic. Um, mild clumsiness, not running as fast as the other kids in PE class, um, unexplained stumbles and falls. But when the symptoms have been present for you know, several months, um, usually the family, the school recognizes that there's something wrong. Being the most common cause of genetic ataxia in that age group, the concern about a neurologic problem is thought about either by the pediatrician or by a pediatric neurologist who may be called in to diagnose. Or if somebody presents with an atypical form, they're a little older than the average, um, or they present initially with scoliosis, or rarely they present with heart failure before the ataxia is recognized. I went to the neurologist first. He's the one that initially brought up the word ataxia. He referred me to getting an MRI and CT scan. Looking back on what I know now, I don't think my neurologist understood what I was describing as how he would understand. I was saying I was dizzy but really it was my gait and my vision that was being affected and that was causing me to feel the way I was feeling. So overall, I was maybe in a guessing period of three to four years. Friedrich's ataxia, a progressive and debilitating neurological disorder. Patients can often experience at a young age difficulty walking, clumsiness, and impaired speech. Looking back on what I know now, I don't think my neurologist understood what I was describing as how he would understand. I was saying I was dizzy but really it was my gait and my vision that was being affected and that was causing me to feel the way I was feeling. So overall, I was maybe in a guessing period of three to four years. The clinical presentation with these key features, gait and limb ataxia, slowed or slurred speech, 
absence of lower limb reflexes, distal weakness in the hands and feet, dizziness, scoliosis, or other skeletal abnormalities. If they meet even half the criteria for classic Friedreichs, adult and pediatric neurologists will feel comfortable ordering the Friedreichs Ataxia GAA expansion test, which looks for enlargement of that segment of the gene that then blocks the production of the frataxin protein. With neurologic problems that are expected to be progressive, early diagnosis, especially an early genetic diagnosis, you can begin to set out a, a health maintenance plan. For Frankie, it took four years of getting multiple opinions and meetings with various neurologists to finally have a genetic test to confirm her diagnosis. On my diagnosis day, I finally met with my neurologist and I had my mom next to me. They slid over a piece of paper with my test results and the first line said, Francesca Perizzola has inherited Friedrich's ataxia. Um, it, I had been going through years and years of questioning myself and my body. Overall, I felt grateful that I finally received an answer. As Friedrich's ataxia progresses, there's an increased risk of scoliosis, heart failure, and arrhythmias, diabetes, difficulty swallowing, slurred speech, muscle atrophy, and more. Because of these serious consequences, patients should be diagnosed as early as possible to help optimally manage symptoms. The team is, is key. Regular visits with the neurologist, a general internist or an endocrinologist, cardiologist. The heart is the primary determinant of mortality. Our foundation of management does revolve around rehabilitation medicine. Physical therapy when appropriate, occupational therapy, speech and swallowing therapy. We know that a regular exercise program, proper diet, um, and judicious use of whatever supplements the, the family would like to try can absolutely improve the, un the young person's quality of life. After I received my diagnosis, my mom and I drove home. Um, it was a very emotional drive. I had to relearn the approach I was gonna take in life. Four months after my diagnosis, I met Dr. Perlman. She not only was able to address every single question I had about my body and the way FA was going to affect me, but she also had every re resource that I needed. Um, one being FARA, or the Friedrichs Ataxia Research Alliance. I became an ambassador. They would send me out to different doctorate programs, genetic counseling programs, to speak to them and kind of put a face behind FA, as well as raising a little bit of awareness. When a patient has been diagnosed with a rare disease like Friedreich's ataxia. That relationship between the patient, the family, and the physician is key. They need to have an open dialogue. Being able to engage with Frankie and people like Frankie to keep them looking forward. You know, I was so impressed with her willingness to learn and to really face this problem head on. I've just learned that I need to listen to my body and that things are gonna be really hard and things are gonna be really challenging, but I got it. I can figure it out. For more information on many of the infographics you have seen here today and to find resources to help neurologists diagnose FA and patients to manage FA, visit connectfa.com. You can also visit our website, The Balancing Act, com.
Well, thanks so much for joining us today. That's right. And remember, head to our Facebook page, our website, and if you like social media and all of it, there's Twitter. Absolutely. Well, be safe, take care <laughs> of your family, and we'll see you next time.